Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Recently, we did an episode explaining the different standards available for HDR or high dynamic range TVs and displays, which you should check out over here if you haven't. But come right back, because if you find yourself drawn in by all those HDR marketing promises of brilliant, lifelike images, what else should you consider before you buy? And why is HDR such a big deal anyway? Simply put, dynamic range is the difference between the darkest dark and the brightest white that your display can show. Having a high dynamic range will improve both contrast and color reproduction, saving you from scenes that look overly muted or washed out. So your first step in buying an HDR display should be to check what standards it supports, such as HDR10, Dolby Vision, and HLG, against what kind of content that you're going to be watching. And you're gonna to wanna to cross-reference that against the standards that the content that you'll be watching utilize. Also, if you're into that sort of thing, you'll need to ensure that your favorite streaming service will provide your device with an HDR feed at all. For example, Amazon Prime Video supports HDR on certain TVs and phones, but not on PCs. Which isn't to say that you'll automatically have a wonderful experience if you go with a Dolby Vision TV to match your impressive Dolby Vision Blu-ray collection. Another specification you should pay very close attention to is a display's brightness rating in nits. Since HDR is predicated on having a wide brightness range, you'll want a display that can get sufficiently bright for you to see the HDR effect as intended. So many of the nicer HDR displays are rated at 1000 nits peak brightness, which is ideal because that's what HDR10 videos are mastered at. Now I'd say you could get away with a TV in the 600 to 700 nit range if you're on a budget, but beware cheaper models below 500 nits. Most of these really can't do HDR justice, with the exception, of course, of OLEDs. These don't go as high in terms of their peak brightness, but they go much lower in terms of their maximum level of black, so you're still getting a very wide range. All right then, so you've done your homework, you've picked the right display, and you've made sure that your devices, like your Blu-ray players and your PCs, support the HDR standard you want, which for a PC means you've got HDMI 2.0a, or a DisplayPort 1.4 port, as well as a GPU that's no older than NVIDIA's GTX 10 series, AMD's RX 400 series, or Intel's 8th generation Core UHD graphics. Is there any additional setup to do? Well, you probably don't need new HDMI cables, but you will, of course, want to make sure that any HDR functionality is switched on for all devices in the chain. Sometimes this can actually be buried deep within a menu under a different name, like Deep Color on LG's displays, which I guess isn't entirely inaccurate. But if you're trying to use HDR on a PC, things can get even messier. You'll want to go into your GPU settings and make sure that you switch the bit depth to 10 bits instead of 8. This will ensure that your computer will use the wider color gamut we discussed previously. Then you'll need to double check that the HDR and advanced color settings under display properties and the stream HDR video options under video playback are both enabled. You'll also want to make sure that you have the latest graphics drivers installed and that you're running the Windows 10 Fall Creators update at minimum, because even with a recent GPU, HDR support is non-existent on older drivers and Windows builds prior to 1709. This is especially frustrating if you've put together an expensive computer to play the growing number of HDR games on offer, and even more so if you're a Linux user. Which perfectly illustrates, I guess, that while we've tried to give you the best advice we can in today's episode, HDR is still a fledgling technology with even more new standards trying to gain a foothold. So pay close attention to what changes are taking place if you're buying a new TV a year or two down the line. Or if all of this is too much, you can just go outside and look at the trees. It's like HDR gaming, but with even better graphics. Speaking of even better, today's sponsor will make you even better. Are you interested in computer science? Check out Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a computer scientist. Instead of just passively listening to lectures, with Brilliant, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems, and they provide the tools and the framework that you need in order to do it. 
Brilliant's thought-provoking content is based around breaking up complexities into bite-sized, understandable chunks and will lead you from curiosity to mastery. And you'll be in the company of over 5.5 million members who share your curiosity and love for math and science. So what are you waiting for? You can support TechWiki and learn more about Brilliant by clicking the link in the video description or going to brilliant.org slash techwiki and signing up for free. The first 200 people to go to the link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so be sure to check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos, and don't forget to, uh, oh yeah, leave a comment if you want to see a future fastest possible topic. And don't forget to subscribe and follow, and but like not follow me home. That's weird. Just follow on the internet. I mean, you can make that pretty weird too if you get really into it.